The following Spanish class is brought to you by Metro Floors, where you can find quality flooring made affordable. Voted Antelope Valley's best for 23 years, Metro Floors also has an A plus Better Business Bureau rating. Metro Floors, simply the best. Today we are going to discuss some basic elements of verbs and nouns. Let's begin with some vocab. A verb is an action word. A noun is a person, place, or thing. An infinitive verb is a verb in its unaltered form, for example, to go. To conjugate, which is a verb or conjugation, the noun, referred to the alteration of the original form of a verb according to the tense and subject. In simpler terms, when the action was performed and by whom. Unless you have learned a language before, conjugation may appear foreign to you. Believe it or not, we conjugate our English verbs. In English, an infinitive verb is written to go, to eat, to sleep. Once you remove the to and add I, you, he, she, it, we, ye, or they, the verb is no longer infinitive, it is conjugated. We do that. I go, you eat, he sleeps, etc. Conjugation also includes the tenses, such as the present, past, and future tenses, among others. Let's see an example. The present tense, third person, singular, of the verb to go are instructions for a conjugation. It refers to the he, she, it goes. In Spanish, the variation in the spelling between the different conjugations is much greater than in English. Spanish conjugation is more difficult, but the language as a whole is much simpler. Now let's go ahead and talk a little bit about subject pronouns. These go with verbs, and if you look at the following tables, you'll recognize the English ones, of course, very easily. Uh, you have both singular and plural in both languages. In English, you have I, you have you, and thou, which you'll find in Old English, right? The thou. Uh, you have the he, she, it. And then you have your plurals, we. Ye, which is the plural of thou, which again is Old English, which means you all. And you have they, or you, plural, so you all. Spanish is similar. The I corresponds to yo. The you, or thou, corresponds to tu, which is the informal you form. So that's used with family members and friends, or people of your own age or younger. You then have él, ella, usted, where él is he, ella is she, and usted is the formal you. Use the people you don't know, people who are older than you. Uh, it's a way to show respect. Moving on to the plural side, you have the nosotros or nosotras, which corresponds to we. You have vosotros or vosotras which which corresponds to ye and you have ellos which is uh, they or ellas which is also they and you have ustedes which is the formal plural you so let's go ahead and look at some of these uh, subject pronouns in action okay so here's some examples uh, let's first look at the infinitive form of all of the verbs we're going to use in the, on this page for Spanish. So, querer, which is to want, necesitar, which is to need, amar, which is to love, trabajar, is to work, hacer, is to do or to make, and jugar, which is to play. So now let's move on. Yo quiero. Tú necesitas, él, ella o usted ama, nosotros, nosotras trabajamos, vosotros, vosotras hacéis, ellos, ellas 
ustedes juegan. In most cases, you can omit the subject pronoun in Spanish because the verb that follows is conjugated in the form of the particular su subject pronoun and thus tells the listener or reader who is doing the action of the verb. So let's look at a quick example of that. So you could say, yo quiero, or you could just say, quiero. The yo is extra because quiero in itself says, I want. If you add the yo, it is emphasized that I want. For example, quiero papas fritas. I want french fries. Yo quiero papas fritas. I want french fries. However, the subject pronoun has its uses. It can, of course, be used to show emphasis, like we talked about before, but it can also be used to clarify. You'll notice that the word quiere is accompanied by él, ella, or usted. But is it él quiere, ella quiere, or usted quiere? That can make a big difference. You can always omit the subject pronoun, but it is useful in situations like this since these options share the same conjugated verb form, quiere. The same goes for ellos, ellas, ustedes, quieren. So if in the conversation there's a lot of he said, she said, he would, she did, you might want to clarify so you understand who's doing and saying what. All right, now let's change the topic a little bit and talk about articles that go with nouns. These words are called articles. The, a, an. These are their Spanish translations. The is el, la, los, las. Notice that el from he that we talked about earlier, which was a subject pronoun, had an accent mark over the e to differentiate the el of the and the el of he. Then we have the a, an, which their translations are un and una. Then, of course, you have some or a few, which is unos, unas. Let's go ahead and take a look at some examples. El piso, the floor. La madera, the wood. Los muebles, the furniture. Las sillas, the chairs. I would remind you that, of course, the Y and double L can make a Y noise or a SH noise. And I'm more accustomed to making the sh noise. So sometimes it'll come out that way. I'm trying to do the ya noise when I can. But sometimes the sh noise comes out. So remember they are the same thing. And finally for our last examples for today. Un animal. An animal. Una mujer. A woman. Unos hombres. Some men. Unas muchachas. Some girls. Don't forget to practice. Subscribe to our Metro Flores YouTube channel to stay up to date with free Spanish class videos. Thank you for watching. Until next time, Viva Metro Flores.